Hello and welcome to the Indiana Jones version of Writerly Witterings. So hello and welcome back. Sorry about the slightly strange introduction there, but um, today we're talking about a new pen. And it's... It's frankly gorgeous. It's this. The Conway Stewart Model 58 Indiana Jones. So let's have a look at it. Hello again. So what have we got for you here? Well, this is the Series 58 Indiana Jones replica pen. <clears throat> now, if you saw the original film of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, there is a scene in that in which the delightful Sir Sean Connery is in a tank, I think it was, and is being held by some nasty German chaps. So what he does is he whips out his pen and squirts ink in the face of the nearest sentry, thereby getting the accolade from his friend in the vehicle with him of having proved the fact that the pen is mightier than the sword. Interesting little scene, funny little thing. What the hell? So, this is the Indiana Jones replica made by Conway Stewart. It was actually a Model 58 or something very similar to that that was used in the film, and so Conway Stewart thought, why don't we do something similar? So they have. Now I'll just show you a few little things here. So you get a certificate of authenticity with the pen. You get a join the conversation, keep up to date with all your news and everything else. Nice little flyer that comes with it, with a thank you, which I think is a nice note. You should always say thanks when people buy things from you. And it comes with this. The Conway Stewart Series 58 Indiana Jones Replica Lever Fill Pen. And it's a little booklet which gives you a bunch of information about the replica, how it was made... Henry the pen, don't you see the pen is mightier than the sword? And then some more details about the pen, black acrylic with gold fittings, all sorts of stuff. And also they talk about the pen they made for Gary Oldman when he was in The Darkest Hour. So, lots of little bits. What's in the box? Well... First of all, we have a standard Conway Stewart presentation box, which I do think is a really nice touch. Simple box, leatherette, by which I mean it's not leather, but looks the part and feels very nice. And when you have it on your desk, you simply pull up the tab and it becomes a presentation box, which is neat. I just love that design, so simple. But I'm not talking about the box today, so let's get that out of the way. Now, this is the pen. Just look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? For those who have an interest, the length is 129 millimetres, so 12.9 centimetres. Posted, it's 161. Let's just show it. There you go. That's posted. Just the nib and barrel is 121 millimetres. The cap itself is 59 and a half. Diameter of the pen at this widest is 12.2 millimetres, 1.2 centimetres. The cap is 13.5, 1.35 centimetres. And the weight apparently is just 15 grams. Now, those who know me will know that that is too light. I like a weightier pen. But I have to say this is just gorgeous. It's lovely to use. OK, let's just have a quick look at the bits that are involved. I'm going to bring back the box now. It's a bit easier for the camera to focus and for me to see what's going on. So, let's talk about the externals first. Black acrylic, which I think is just lovely. It is in every way ideal for a pen of this sort of design and this sort of feel. It has gold clip 
with a black, is it the finial you call it? Which is a cone shaped cap, very very shallow angle obviously but it's a cone shape. The back is another cone shape. Nice and simple. It has a taper from the middle to the top, from the middle to the bottom, both on the cap and the and the, uh, the main barrel. So that's nice. It has a good strong clip. It does work very well attaching to my shirt. It has three gold bands and one detail I really like, don't know how clear this will be, but they stick out from the acrylic of the cap. They're actually quite prominent and I like that, it just gives you something to feel. It is a very seductive pen to hold in your hands. It's got lots of feel to it, it's not just simple smooth. What else is there on the outside? It has engraving here, which I think you can probably see. Conway Stewart, limited edition. This is number 9 of 100 and it is made in England. Simple engraving, nothing much to say. So that is the outside obvious stuff, apart from this lever, which I will come to shortly. So, unscrewing it, it's uh, one, one and a little bit unscrewing. And now what we have is a gorgeous Conway Stewart nib, old fashioned, no breather hole, it's just a straight cut for the tines. And it is, I'll just check, 18 karat gold. Beautiful. This is abroad and it writes just wonderfully nicely. You'll see at the front of the section here there's a flaring so your fingers don't slide straight down, which is a risk with slippery pens as I've discovered with the Lamy 2000 in steel. This doesn't tend to want to slide out of your hand, I think partly because of the screw threads there, but then also because of that nice little flaring at the bottom. It is a, an old fashioned cigar shape, it narrows down to the section, it narrows down at the back. So, what about this lever? Well, if you've never used a lever filling pen, this will be quite a nice surprise for you. I am now getting some ink. Now, I was wondering what sort of ink to use with this pen, and in the end, I came down in favour of Topaz from Pelican. Why? I don't know, it just appeals to me today, really. So let's see how this goes. Now, if you haven't seen a lever filler before, and it's quite likely you won't have done because everybody's gone over to cartridge converters or vacuum fillers and piston fillers nowadays, but this used to be a really popular mechanism for filling a pen. What happens is inside here there is a rubber or silicon sack. When you lift this lever, which is slightly fiddly to do in front of a camera, but when you lift this lever and squeeze it down, it squeezes out all the air from the sack inside by compressing the pist by compressing the sack. And then when you put it into some ink, all you have to do is let the lever go back. I do it gently, I don't think you have to do it particularly gently, it's quite a robust little design. And I do recommend you leave the pen in the ink for a little while, because I've found that, possibly because the sack is new, but if you just listen now, I'm going to, I've just opened up the lever, I'm now going to shut it down and lift. You can hear that little sucking noise, that's because it hasn't had time to suck up enough ink and so it's letting air in. So I always just leave it standing there just for a couple of seconds and then when you lift it out there's no sucking noise, which means you've got a full ink sack. 
put the lid on your ink jacks before you knock it all over your desk again. So there we have one full, I trust, Conway Stewart 58 Indiana Jones. I also like the fact that whenever I shut my pen I always tend to have the cap on top and the nib facing me. And when I do that, every time the cap matches the line of the filling lever. Little detail, I just like it. When you tighten it up, it always looks neat and tidy in a line. Right, bit of paper. Back in a sec. I really think writing with an Indiana Jones type of pen deserves the best William Hanna writing paper. So, let's have a look. I do love this pen. This. I'm going to say I love this absolutely. I love the looks, I love the feel. It is very light for me, but I still love it. I absolutely adore it. One thing I do like is that lever filling. Why do I like a lever fill so much? Well, because you saw how quick and easy it is to fill it. You don't have to unscrew and fiddle about with a piston inside on the cartridge converter. You don't have to unscrew, screw in with a piston filler. This is just a very straightforward, simple, elegant design. You can see why people in the 20s really liked these lever filling pens because it is just a gorgeous simple design. And again, I love the simple but really rather perfect way that everything lines up. Does it write upside down? I know someone's going to ask me. It does. It writes quite well. Very, very extra fine, I'd say. But it does work. Bit scratchy on that one there. Much better right way up. Now, I've had some discussions with people recently about Conway Stewart because obviously Conway Stewart did go bust. And it was very sad. I was most upset. But it's been bought up all of their brands, their patents, their designs have been brought up by a company and they are again ConwayStuart.com on the internet. And I have to say the quality of workmanship is as good as it ever was if not better. I think the quality they're doing now is much better than the quality of my original Churchill, for example, which was made late 90s, I think, when they first got into financial difficulties. But this is an example of the sort of workmanship they do. And to my mind, it is sheer perfection. For 300 and something odd pounds before VAT, it is a really good buy. 
If you're interested in a pen that you can count on as being a collectible item, if you're interested in a pen that just looks and feels lovely, or if, like me, you're interested in a pen that can be really quickly refilled because you're writing a lot and you need to be able to get the thing filled up quickly without hassle, there is no pen better than this, in my opinion. Absolutely gorgeous to look at. And I am really grateful to Conway Stewart for letting me have a go with this because it is a collectible item. It's one of only a small number being made and it's just beautiful. Thanks a lot Conway Stewart, thanks for watching this. Okay folks, now most of you watching this will know that I do adore Conway Stewart pens. <clears throat> you will know that I waxed absolutely lyrical about that gorgeous little red Wordsworth, which I adored. That Wordsworth had some things going for it that were its size, because it would fit in a pocket very neatly. I loved the acrylic it was made of. I didn't expect to, because I thought it would be far too pink, but I did love the acrylic. One second. I'm being pestered by someone who wants me to help her onto her bed. That's better. So yes, I absolutely adored the Wordsworth, especially because of the very fine flag nib that was on it. I've now got another dog pestering me. Get to bed. Go on. She doesn't need lifting up. Stay. But the great thing about the Wordsworth was it had a certain weight that made it feel like a much bigger pen. That was really gorgeous. However, this little pen has been sitting in my pocket and you can see it's so light it doesn't distort the fabric. It is really neat. This pen has... I'm just being scratched on the back now because I obviously hadn't noticed the dog wanted to fuss. Stay there. This little dog here. You are a pest, aren't you? Good girl. My apologies. The trials and tribulations of trying to make a video when you own dogs. This is much, much lighter. But I have to say that filling mechanism, the classic looks with these gorgeous nine carat gold rings, that lovely lever action, which is so quick and easy. I think anyone who buys this and doesn't take it out with them every single day is a moron. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And only a hundred people are going to get their hands on one. I'm envious. I'm envious. On that shocking note, I think it's probably time for me to get back to work. You'll notice one startling lack here. I haven't got my jacket on. Do you know why? Because when I put my jacket on today to record the first part of this film, the dogs went potty thinking they were going for a WALK. So I'm not doing that again, but I'll just say thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed that, don't forget you can nip down the bottom and click on the Patreon link or send me some money via PayPal if you want to support this YouTube channel. But apart from that, thanks a lot. Subscribe it, like it, share it, all those good things. And then hopefully I'll see you next week with some other bit of brilliant stuff. You never know. Thanks a lot. Take care. See you soon. Bye.